know, you mentioned that, you know, that people offload creatives, yeah. especially when you're in a room of, you know, a, a, an open house, a free house of uh, throwing ideas into a, into a track or yeah. and coming up with... Do you have to have a level of em- empathy? That, Definitely, yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. But I think you... There's been some writing sessions where everyone's crying, literally, and, like, people are telling me they need to go to rehab and they're full-on drug addicts and need to sort their lives out and or they are not in love with the person they're with and things. I'm like, I'm like let's write a song about it. I'm like, oh, my God. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Come on. <laughs> we got the, the memo. Vibes. We got the memo. Yeah, ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct central London or central as what? Central as you need to be. Big shout out to all the regular shares and cares of people out there doing their most to preserve and pass on the information, street culture, and all forms of rocking. All right. You got the television app, you know what it is, free download, iPhone, Android, go get it, it's, it's easy, it's got all the things you need to know, it's mini mixes, big docs, small docs, notorious podcast that proceeds across all your uh, audio airwaves. Yo, big shout out to our sponsors, the mighty Hodder Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout, that's some NFT business for you, um, and yo, we have a very special guest here, I'm bugging because I'm a fan first, you understand, uh, this lady is multi-genre, singer, songwriter, DJ, she just gets involved into the mix and if you haven't heard of Minor Fools then you've been sleeping somewhere in a very undisturbed place. Girls Next Door is the new project and we've got a whole heap of other things. There's a whirlwind of emotions here especially for me Minor Fools. How are we? I'm good. <laughs> I'm just saying literally I kind of got the memo yeah. where your 80s inspired. Yeah. Well it's 90s mine. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going with the 90s. Yeah. Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine that's one hell of an inspiration for you. Hell yes. Yeah. Oh my god yeah. So you grew up on it isn't it? It's that yeah. kind of science. Yeah I bought all the CDs. <laughs> yeah yeah totally. <laughs> totally. Uh, where have you travelled from? I live in Brighton. Brighton? Yeah. Brighton by the sea. Yeah. Yeah. How do you find that? Oh, I love it. Yeah. A breath of fresh air. Absolutely love it. Like I lived in London for a while and just a bit busy, a yeah. bit busy. I like, <laughs> bit, I like the fresh air. But yeah, when, especially in the lockdowns, I spent many a day just walking up and down the beach, up and down, up oh, and down, man. up and down. And I like the, I like being able to just see really far. Mm. It's really good for my like sanity, mm. just to be able to see for miles, mm. see the sea. Yeah, yeah. For but miles. It's grounding, isn't it? Yeah, you know? I love it. When I mean, you got the water and the sounds and stuff. I had a sound engineer called Ilias, big up Ilias, and he was from Greece and he used to do his head in the whole idea of not even being close to the water and stuff. He yeah. needed it. Yeah, it's a spiritualization, isn't it? Yeah. But it's the thing that us creators need in our lives, right? Um, Brighton has always been a wicked hub for, you know, creative. It's a creative hub, right? Yeah. And you, you must have seen a lot and been around a lot of creative uh, uh, energies around around Brighton. Huh? Oh, my God, yeah. Like, I studied music production in Brighton. So, I, well, before that, I was in Norwich. No, Born no. and bred Norfolk. I'll type my Norwich crew. What a front, you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're a fan of me, as if I'm the biggest <laughs> fan of you. You were like, can I. Uh, are you free to come? And I was like, uh, yeah, big fan. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to see you when I was still at school mm-hmm. and I was front row and you signed my vinyl. Get in, yeah. come on. And I was like, he signed my vinyl. Come yes. Come on, I was so fun. chuffed. I've still got it. Have you? It's still in my studio. Serves yeah. you right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I know who you are and I've been a fan for a long time. Oh, well, <laughs> honestly, it's reciprocated. I think it's very, you know, when... When you think about cream rising to the top and those, you know, ever impressionable times of when you're seeing different... I didn't realise you were into hip-hop. I mean, you made your lane in something else, but you are bang into hip-hop and rap and everything, right? Yeah, I was watching Kelly LaRock's interview with you and she was like, she kind of got a bit annoyed, didn't she? Everyone going, you have to be in this garage box as a singer. And mm. she was like, I don't want to be. I'm mm. a, like, she's an incredible soul singer, mm-hmm. like outstanding. Mm-hmm. I've seen her do stuff with live band stuff mm-hmm. and she's like, wow. And I feel a bit the same, like I don't want to be... I've done a lot of piano house releases. Mm-hmm. Like I've written a lot of sort of like gym songs. If you've been in the gym, you probably heard me singing, getting you doing your um, <laughs> your little air workout yeah, going. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a hundred releases in the dance world of a hit now. One hundred and two songs I've One, signed. One hundred and two dancers. Yeah. Fucking come on! This is a podcast. We don't get any old Tom <laughs> Dick Harry in here. This is the proper. These are the shit. Oh, that's a 
that's a, a seismic lot. amount. Yeah, I've been working hard. I did lots of years, like, just writing, hoping for the best, like, going, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. <laughs> and then something just happened. People started signing the songs, and it just sort of, like, was a bit of a domino effect. And then one person says, oh, you're good. And then other people go, oh, come in, come in. You, like, you try and bash down the doors for mm, years, mm, going, take mm, me seriously. Mm, oh, my God. And no one does. Mm. And you're like, oh, this is too hard. I'm going to give up. Mm. And then... Something changes sometimes. If Pause you know. right there, because now we're going to reverse engineer this shit, right? Okay, so humble beginnings in Norwich. Yeah. Right, so from that point there, you started writing? You were writing that at that point? Yeah, I was like, I didn't know at the time, but I was top lining. I was getting instrumentals, hip hop stuff, just doodling over the top, recording my ideas. I had like hundreds of, like in retrospect, quite rubbish ideas. Mm-hmm. Like if we go, oh, they're really bad. Do you listen back to them now? Nah. Yeah. No, they're all in the bin, literally in the mm. bin. Like, I recorded on CD. They are in the actual bin. Like, not CDs digital are bent, bin. They're, they're bent for a reason. CDs yeah. don't exist anymore, and it's better that way. <laughs> they're in the actual bin bin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're not coming to see the light of day ever. But they kind of taught me that I just love doing it. Like, I'm clearly obsessed with writing songs, and I'm, that I can't stop. Even if I sort of stopped paying my bills and stuff, I'd mm. probably just do it for fun, because it's in my blood. Mm. Like, it makes me happy. Mm. Music's the only thing that's sort of always been there. Where do me. you channel that in? Where's, where's that Where's that channeling come from? Because, um, you know, all the other kind of singer-songwriters, songwriters of their time, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know the, the possession of free thinking and being completely in tune with one's immediate creative response in an age where you know you can sometimes be up to nine hours on your phone oh yeah <laughs> i can't believe i told you that yeah i was like what's your screen time daily nine hours yeah that would be my life now just That's sat amazing. on my phone but you, um come on be truthful you know you lot out there you're suffering but how'd you get that how'd you get that creative i, I would say to like because i work for I've got, last year i got a publishing deal yeah. like three years that was my dream come true as a songwriter we have a company called ultra and i was like yes i've actually get made it. it like when people go what do you do for a job it's like i've got a real stamp of approval mm-hmm. now someone gave me an actual deal mm-hmm. as a songwriter go on, girl. but um yeah and then i've asked the other people in that company like how do you write every day like i went from writing a couple of days a week to five monday to friday is songwriting time and it's like whoa you can't just walk in a studio and go i can't think of anything you have to like leave every day with a finished song how do you do that how do you do that i think and i've asked other people how and they're like well you kind of have to stop thinking about it and just let it and it sounds really cheesy but let it flow through you Mm -hmm. and it's it always comes i've never had a day ever where i can't finish a song it might not be the best song you've ever written Mm -hmm. but you finish a song every day you Mm -hmm. just you see it in a different way Mm -hmm. And if you're like a full-time songwriter, it's not like you're doing your three-song EP and it's like the most heartfelt thing you've ever done. Mm-hmm. We just bash them out. It's yeah, like not invented the wheel. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, you just write some lyrics that mean something. Yeah. It doesn't have to change the world. But you have to... And then me- more my vibe is melody. I love melody more than lyrics. Really? It has to hit, like, feel. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I get, these, I get these whispers on the grapevine that, you know, there's certainly some songwriters that can totally handle a, a verse... And there's some people that can totally handle a chorus. Which one do you lean to if you have to, you know, spend painstaking hours writing lyrics? Which are you a verse or a chorus girl? Well, I think verse is much easier. To you reckon? Do. Yeah, because chorus is what people have to remember. And like the best songs ever written in the world, they're the choruses that people yeah. know. People don't really remember every well, if unless it's a proper classic. Mm. If it's like Queen, for example, you mm. know every single word mm-hmm. to the whole song. Mm-hmm. Prince, everybody, you're like, yes, I know mm. every tiny bit, but. In general, your average person knows a hook. Mm. So that is, for me, the most pressure because you have to write the catchy bit. Mm. And the name of the song, that's a big part as well. So sometimes you just even start with the song title and you see it nowadays, it's like a procedure, like what is the song going to be called on Spotify? And you can see the end before you even write the middle. And really? The end. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that kind of a state of the industry without getting too techers too soon because you know but you know it's kind of the that's yeah. the reality of the game right now isn't I it i think it's a very i mean compared to 10 years ago so fast paced like so many songs are coming out every friday it's just like a factory especially dance music which i do most of the time it's like boom 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 it is a factory and yeah so it's just a hundred a find... hundred releases that were in the top 40. No, 100 releases signed to a label. 100 yeah. releases. That's enough for me, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's the cookie cutter approach. And also, um, melodies, they're quite divisive, aren't they? Yeah. 
Do you mean like you could be sitting in anything if the melody's good? Yeah. That's, that's the, you know, Rage Against the Machine, for instance, you know. Big fan, yeah. <laughs> Went to Reading in big baggy jeans many a time at the front. Slipknot, big fan. You sw- you- I'm seriously a Slipknot fan. Yo. I was listening to Slipknot today yeah. on the way here. Duality, come on. Yeah, people would don't normally think that about me, but they'd be like, yeah, you, sh- you don't look like a Slipknot fan. Can I just- it's like, I am a Slipknot fan. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely... But then when it comes to house music, right, yep. there's a real... Now, I've... Tr- I've tried. I've succeeded. You get me over the lip of a of a of a good vocal over house music, but you really got to dull down the lyrical value of a lot of those. Can't kind of be songs. too deep. No, no. If you've got a riffy piano, and you know you've got to take yourself to you know the Bahamas or Ibiza or somewhere, really. Yeah, and also like the biggest songs, even like festivals I'm playing now, there isn't one festival I've ever turned up to on stage where the DJ isn't playing some kind of remix of Show Me Love or Free From Desire. Mm-hmm. There's like a top ten songs and the choruses are really quite simple, like na 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 I mean you don't have to really dig deep with the lyrics there. No, no, no. It's just nah over and over again. But hooky. Seriously hooky. Yeah, yeah. The voice the voice plays a huge part in that as well. And you can you get the right singer on the right song. Mm. It's a different, like, it's a different thing. And it will get signed, mm. in my opinion. It is about it's half the song and half about the performance. Like, if you get an incredible singer to sing the most simple lyrics, they can smash it. And everyone goes, oh, I believe that. Mm-hmm. And when I'm, in, like, when I'm writing for someone, I want to believe the words. Even if it's quick, even if it's like, let's do this fast and get something done, it still has to, you have to feel something. Mm. No matter what song it is. You might have, like, rock music, you've got to feel it. A ballad garage i want to feel something mm. every time and the fact that you kind of grew up on hip-hop and thrash <laughs> metal and all these different <laughs> which should because you know these mumble rappers and i've got to give them credit like i really value the fact that you know okay it, it can get a little bit uh um auto-tuned and affected i get that but you know ain't no different to napalm death shouting down the mic it's like you don't have to understand absolutely everything <laughs> do you know what i mean and it's just like it is what it is i think if you try and overthink it if people like i always think do the people the the, the fans do they mm-hmm. connect with it and if everyone's saying this is good they're kind of right mm. and like who are we if we say oh it's a bit different now in terms of hip-hop and stuff it is the best thing because that's what the people want right now mm. so you kind of have to respect everything that is charting because mm. that's what people are connecting to. Yeah. So it might not be exactly, I don't know how to write it, for example, mm-hmm. but I respect it. Even if it's like, yeah, it's a bit samey sometimes mm. with the auto tune. But same with singers, like I can't hear now. I hate hearing my own voice without auto tune on. Like yeah. the real voice, you're like, huh, <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> stop. Like, yeah, this is so weird. Really? My actual voice, yeah. Because yeah. it's so, it's a world of auto tune. Crazy Everyone... process. I think people get the d- disillusioned by the fact that, oh, yeah, I just grab a mic and go sing over there yeah. and just record it and put it out. Yeah. You, there's the fine tuning on well, vocals nowadays. Well, like, I'd say, I never even, like, so people send me tracks like every day saying, oh, can you sing on this? And I'm like, yeah, I'll try and fit them all in. With my spreadsheets, like, yeah, I try and do them all. And then um, I would never send an idea, like a top line melody lyrics idea back unless it's fully done. I wouldn't do like, here's a vibe, because people can't hear it. Mm. They want to hear it like ready for Spotify radio yeah. on the demo, like every time. It's quite hard Labor work. intensive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You have to fully like vocal produce it, edit it. Like a lot of people work in different ways, but that's the way I work. I want to send something that's like finished. So do you, if you were to like carve a demo for someone specific or someone gave you, like you say, the data sheet of all the things they want and they're after. Yeah. Do you, do you record them right at home before submitting and then going to that next phase of meeting the artist and then recording it with them? Yeah. I always write with someone. I hate writing on my own. Really? I find it really lonely. Why? Yeah. Why? I'm just like, oh, I don't know when something's rubbish or amazing. Yeah, so I'd be like, oh yeah, here's no tear. <laughs> so I'd be like, either this is the best thing in the world or the worst thing and no one's going to ever hear this. I need someone to vibe with like, every mm. time. I never write on my own. So I always write with at least one other person. Every does, time. Does some of the, does some of the creative juice of writing and singing and does that come from a because i guess it's a different outcome 
if you like for instance your your Achilles heel is that you you don't want to be on your own doing it. Yeah. But there's a vol- <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a vulnerableness to the to the songs when they come out. They you know, sometimes they conjure up certain things that, you know, maybe that vulnerability adds the that extra bit of dynamic. I think being vulnerable is the perfect I was thinking like it's really hard sometimes being the creative person in the front of the shop yeah. going, do you like it? Because yeah. everyone else can hide. They're like, if you are the A&R, the label, whatever, you've made decisions to make a song come out. Mm. But if it flops, you can go, oh, and just hide. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just be back yeah. there in yeah. Brighton. See, yeah. It wasn't actually me. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you yeah. messed it up. Yeah. But as a singer, you have to be like, oh, okay, that one didn't connect. Mm. And then you have to dust yourself off again, try again and mm. do it again. But it is quite scary because people do have an opinion and that is the bit I really don't like about being a singer mm. everyone's opinions oh yeah gets a bit much oh yeah of course it does everyone has a little opinion can you imagine opinion. being a front girl or guy of a of a song and just I mean 7 out of 10 in Enemy and I lost about 400 gigs thank you Enemy Ugh. do you Ugh. mean these Ugh. are realities back in the day but even now more so with the comments and what people just so say. rude yeah and like no one asked you steve your opinion <laughs> like every time oh i think i know best about you mm. do you you've mm. never met me but mm. you have all your really strong opinions mm. about me and my life mm. it's very odd <laughs> yeah like facebook that's where a lot of the really, really high opinionated ones live oh uh, yeah and they like to send you a little essay uh, on what they think uh but yeah it's it's a weird world it mm. really is bizarre i find it strange because i would never spend my day writing little feedbacks to people about mm. how they should do better mm. yeah yeah like some critiquing you it's know, a bit teacher, strange yeah. yeah it's like here's all my opinions on you <laughs> it's like uh... so i'll just leave that here next time yeah thank you i'll, I'll definitely use your you know your tenaciousness in responding to some of my carved yeah. out work and and use it as a as a as a reference later on down the line it doesn't but work does it how does it feel when you get judged like an enemy or something like mm. do you want to ring them up and go why don't you give me a 10 how can I turn <laughs> this from a 7 to a 10 depends how old I was at the time if I was 21 I'd just be sitting there stewing thinking you wait yeah ironically I end up doing their events and things like that and it's just one particular interview it's always one that you know they never like to attach themselves the, 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 the bigger bit machine never wants to talk have them talk on behalf of them. Mm. It's always some outsourced interview or something like that. They normally got, you know, an axe to grind somewhere, haven't they? I always find people are lovely and, like, kind to your face and then they just are happy to do this weird stuff behind your back or behind a little, mm. like, face. It's, no one would ever come up to us at a gig or something and go, here's all my opinions. <laughs> I've written them all down in a checklist. Like, it's just weird. Mm. But it's just, it's like a different mentality. They go on their little laptop, probably a full-on laptop, mm. not on their phone, and, like, sit there and just go on random things and go, right, I'm just going to be a troll. Mm. And they just get a real kick out of it, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is bizarre to me. But I actually kind of respect the people that do actually come up and say something more direct yeah oh for sure yeah, I'm like know. I'm the kind of person that if you've got a problem and with anyone in my life I'm mm. like should we just talk it out I mm. hate going yeah yeah I'm cool yeah, when I'm yeah, not I yeah. like to just be honest I'm very like like I love that with people like, yeah. everyone in my real like close world like knows if there's a problem I'll say honesty not like oh, I'm a bit anxiously but like I just hate people go yeah yeah I'm fine passive aggressive forever yeah. and it's like well you can't be fine every mm. day nothing's mm. fine every day no, it's yeah, a bit yeah. weird it like, is, isn't it yeah it's a bit creepy yeah, it's a bit, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, everything's great. It's like, yeah. no, it can't be. That's All very LA. Yeah. You know, oh it's, my it's, god. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally LA. You have a wonderful day yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, my trip won't mind me mentioning this. Uh, someone came up backstage after one of the shows. Trip was my. Uh, co-host he kind of was my hype man so I'd do something beatboxy and he'd be just like do that again do. Yeah. Uh, someone came up to him backstage and I quote he called him the Debbie McGee of, of hip hop <laughs> because he was just there beside me just you know showing the magic trick and oh, no. bless his heart but you know you, you kind what of learn off like- oh he was just it was around the same time we went to Austria and and this guy in his really droll kind of Austra- Austrian accent goes um, MC Trip, I believe your uh, performance there was Substandard. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's totally yeah. brutal. Yeah, that's quite harsh. Yeah, harsh, isn't it? harsh. You just think, well, right. And weirdly, me and um, so I've set up this new project, Girls Next Door. With big up, Girls Next Door. Come on, that's with some. DJ Miss Pink. Ooh. I love you. Come on, and Maddie V MC. Old so it's time, Maddie, trio. Yeah, I've seen her wrong. Yeah, she's it's and tough, we, tough. Yeah, she's feisty. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've been doing our thing for years, like mm-hmm. separately, and then we did like a live stream in. 
Miss Pink DJ's kitchen and she's like loves doing them. I have she's seen like, this, yes. She yeah. loves just setting up decks in her kitchen and she gets, they have millions and millions of views. So I joined in one day. I was like, because she lives near me, I was mm-hmm. like, I'll come down, lockdown any times, so I'll come and do a live stream in your kitchen. Mm-hmm. So I met her doing that. And then we did a couple of festivals together. And then we did a live stream with Maddie V. And one video I think got, I don't know, five million streams on Facebook. It's just like without any promotion and just people were literally just sharing it en masse. And I've never had that many views on a Facebook video before. I was like, what is going on here? And then last week we decided, right, we're going to launch like a band. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's really taking it on. They're like, oh, we love it when you come in here, when you come in here. And I love that because if there are any trolls, long-winded point, Mm -hmm. we can fend them off together now. And we're actually using them to our advantage, like algorithms-wise. So if one person goes, it's normally like, 50 nice comments and one crazy, mm-hmm. which is a good ratio. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't like this. Mm. You guys are better off separate. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, mm-hmm. mean. Thanks mm-hmm. for your opinion, Steve. We just, I just call everyone Steve for today. <laughs> um, but yeah, and we're just like, oh, well, you can, uh, you can go do one, Steve. Mm-hmm. And then everyone has a little opinion and we make it into like a little... like Create the thread. Yeah, that creates create the thread. The... And it's just like that alone builds the sharing. So really, Angry Steve is helping us. That's so cool. With see, the views. See. Yeah, so thank you. That's what I'm saying. See, you didn't get here for nothing, see. The whole idea of doing something so organic and because I've seen it, like I said, and it just as an outfit, not only is it, you know, appealing from all the dynamics in which you guys bring to the table, but also you look like you're having fun. Oh, it couldn't be more fun. Like, literally, I started wanting to be a singer back in the day in Norwich and I was like one day I'm going to be a singer like a real one on stage and people are going to care <laughs> and then I'm going to write songs and I'm going to earn some money and I had this crazy dream and it took a while to get there like I'd had some success and then it sort of dipped and I was like oh this is too hard I gave up for a bit tried again and again and again and then I think three years ago is when it sort of like became full full-time job mm. and like every penny I earn is from my artist prediction mm-hmm. was like, wow, this is so cool. Mm-hmm. Dreams can actually come true if you just work at them for long enough. And so we've started this new project and people are actually liking it on their own and sharing it for us. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that before where it kind of takes on it on its own mm-hmm. without begging and going, love me, share my song. Mm-hmm. People are like, ah, this is great. Mm-hmm. And we're getting fully booked for the whole year in a few days. And it's just like, Ah, but this did take a long time to get to this bit. It wasn't what is, like... What is the synergy to that? What, what creates that? Right. Again, I guess it all stems from you having the dream. Yeah, and being obsessed. How Just, dare you? How yeah. dare you have a dream that actually could... <laughs> how dare you have these ideas that, you know, you've spent so much of your time forging, like, blindly... I remember my point now. It was having fun, and we are clearly just actually having fun we're not yeah. trying to prove anything with the yeah. project that's the difference yeah, yeah, totally. whereas everyone's trying to prove that they're good all the time yeah. we were just like let's just have some fun yeah. and people are like we're here for that and we're like all right cool we'll do <laughs> yeah. more of that yeah we're gonna just literally go live on facebook or tiktok whatever mm. and have fun and people really connected with that and we were like oh maybe we were trying too hard before to try and like ah, you know try and make people care you just have to do your thing and then people come naturally. It's less, you know, desperate, I guess. I was quite, like, too hungry before, I think. Can you be too hungry? Yeah, I think so. You can be too, like, help me, book me for a gig. People kind of have to f- think they found you, in my opinion. With, like, an audience, they love thinking they found an artist. Like, if it's a new, especially back in the day, if you got given a CD or something, it'd be like, oh, this is the best. This is so new and everyone's like, oh, you, this is completely new, new. Mm. And everyone gets a buzz off thinking they're the first ones to find it. It's the same on the internet. That's really? why TikTok is so powerful because people think they've found new artists. And a lot of it is actually prepared mm. to be like, it's like a st- st- strategy. strategy. But TikTok is powerful because people can just invent themselves mm. and people connect to it and then they blow up that way it's kind of old school but digital version like with your cd yeah. going this is cool and then the word spreads but it's yeah, all on tiktok yeah, yeah. i guess you see it from both sides as well being the industry and the way that you work and how things can actually be manufactured but then when you see the the raw explosion of something that's got its own it's got its own steam its own energy and yeah well ed sheeran's a good example he's mm. from near me in suffolk Hold tight. yeah Hold tight, ed. i mean he's he, he is literally the real like 
version of that. He was busking at my mate's pub <laughs> for free. <laughs> and now he's the biggest thing ever. Like, he sells out arenas left, right and centre worldwide. <laughs> and he's got an army of fans. But he really did come from just playing in the pub mm. and busking. Grassroots. He really did come that way. It wasn't a made-up story because I saw him. <laughs> like, And I thought, this guy's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Same with like Jessie J, I did gigs with her back in the day and thought, she's pretty good, yeah, like to five people. Everyone did actually start Adele, she was playing pubs, yeah. like she was actually just doing small gigs and then suddenly boom, and things do blow up. Yeah. Not everyone is kind of like, you know, given a golden ticket, they did earn it, which is cool. <clears throat> I think I'd, I'd put you in the same bracket of artists that I would argue you know, the cream rises to the top. You know, if you're good, you're good. But when you start, whether it's on the internet, doing, you know, have a million views on it, on just something that just feels spont spontaneous and fun. Yeah. Through to, you know, spitting sawdust, live gig environments such as Ed or Adele. Yeah. You can trust the sincerity and the, uh, the, the, even in their vocals, it's guttural. It's like you know that this isn't this isn't just a manufactured thing. Mm. It gets to that point, of course, because yeah. you want to kind of protect this thing that you've created. But it starts with at source being fucking determined, de having determination, and, and being as good as you can be, and really forcing yourself to get out there, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, I think those people in particular have really inspired me. Just obviously, like every artist at every level is trying to get better at all times. And I think to think they actually genuinely worked really hard for it, like exhaustion level. Mm. But yeah, once you get to a certain point, it does become a business and you are looking after a team and paying salaries and stuff. It must be very weird. I can't imagine it mm. to be, it must be a lot of pressure. Like I think people think, uh, DJs I've worked with that are very, you know, you know, world touring and stuff, they open up to me. I'm like a magnet for like, tell me the truth mm -hmm. um, about like having panic attacks and, you know, stress related stuff and really like mentally wobbly from having to pay people's wages and like your album can't fail because then you're gonna have to fire people. Mm. In reality, every song you make has to make money mm -hmm. and it kind of ruins the vibe a bit, but that is the reality of like making it. You are responsible for lots of people. You're like a dad of mm. your crew mm. and you're paying like big salaries for everyone mm. and everything you do like impacts their, everyone's lives. Well, so a late night where you've actually been boozing and you're, you're yeah. a hot mess, you know that it, there's a payroll. Yeah, it's, I can't imagine that, like having an office mm. full of people mm. that you're responsible for. Like that's a lot of pressure. Lot. Yeah, like you can see how people like Avicii is just too much. Yeah. And it's like, I can't do it anymore. Can't do it anymore. This is too horrible. I didn't sign up for this. I just wanted to be a DJ. Like, yeah, what? yeah. This is rubbish. <laughs> like, horrible. It's crazy when you put it in that context because artists aren't really built for that. No, we're like the opposite. We're yeah. just like unicorns, like wafting around, going. Woo. <laughs> we're not like, oh right, yeah, payroll, yeah, yeah. P A Y E, tax. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's tax. not really in the. Yeah, we don't yeah. really enjoy that side of it. I can't lie. Of all of my <laughs> twenty plus years of doing this stuff, I still have <laughs> never really got to grips with real life stuff. It's a tough one, isn't it? Like, it's just so boring. Yeah. Like even registering my own releases, I'm just like. Whew, I've moved a to-do list thing for about six months. Like, I'll do that next Monday. It was just got to sit down there and like do loads of like processing song titles and song codes. And I mean, I just you've just wanna... reminded me. I've got to book some flights to Frankfurt. But I still haven't done yeah, it. I've been kicking like... that can for the last five, six days now. Yeah, you just go. Ah, I'll do it later. <laughs> I I don't want to do that right now. Yeah. That's really boring. Yeah, it's just oh yeah. That's not. And you have to be unless you're really really successful and have an army of people like your PAs mm. everyone doing stuff for you every minute like here's where you're going now mm. running your life for you like you have to be kind of good at everything and that is quite a lot of pressure you have to be good at the business mm. the creative turn up for stuff you know. do we want to do that that's no. a bigger question it's like, no but do we want at the same time do we want to <laughs> um, what's the word um, do we do we want to delegate people to do it as well like is that does that take away the I guess it doesn't. But I, I'm thinking that maybe disciplinary, being more disciplined in yourself creates the freedom that you need to do the thing that another person you're paying for would do. Mm. It's complicated, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes if you do delegate, it doesn't get done very well. Yeah. And you have to do it twice, which is just a complete waste of time. Yeah. I've tried to have people help me a bit in the past. And it's like, 
right, so what have you done here? They're like, yeah. oh, I got really muddled up. And I'm like, great. Yeah. Okay, cool, I'll do it then. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> why did you book the hotel really far from where we're going? <laughs> oh, yeah, that doesn't work, does it? No, no, it doesn't. That's not a good plan. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah, so I'm a bit of a control freak and uh, I like to do a bit smart. I definitely damn right you get are. involved with uh, like accommodation and like plans. I like plans. Plans yeah. are good. Yeah. Are you an empath? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you when people express their, you know, you mentioned that you know that people offload creatives, yeah. especially when you're in a room of, you know, a, a, an open house, a free house of uh, throwing ideas into a into a track or yeah. and coming up with. Do you have to have a level of em- empathy? That, Definitely, yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. But I think you. There's been some writing sessions where everyone's crying literally, and like people are telling me they need to go to rehab and. They're full on drug addicts and need to sort their lives out, and or they are not in love with the person they're with, and things. I'm like, I'm like, let's write a song about it. I'm like, oh my god, that's happened loads. Really, that particular one. Yeah, I'm like, oh wow, okay. And yes, yeah, you get it's a weird thing because you're in a very creative space, and you are. It's not like just hanging out in a normal environment like at the pub or something where you just talk about chit chat. You go deeper, faster a lot of the time which I love I hate small talk I like talking about like good stuff I don't know oh lovely day yeah nice mm. nails I'm like don't really care I want to talk about your worst day of your life like that appeals to me more so yeah I definitely mm. have empathy and I like to learn about people's stories is like, that heavy on the head yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which brings me to what I'm doing on Friday which is for the first time in my life I'm going to go on a panel and talk about mental health problems with Charlie T, Radio 1 DJ and Turno, who Turno set up a charity because his brother like um, committed suicide last year, horrifically. Oh, no. So he set up this charity called What's On Your Mind um, and I'm joining in. So we're going to be talk about really important stuff on Friday. So yeah, I definitely have a lot on my shoulders because mm. I do have a lot of people's sort of like tales. But mm. yeah, you are like a counsellor. Well, you're all doing it though. If you're it's four of you in a writing session, you're everyone's counsellors, and you kind of like, like feeding off each other. Okay, and you've got to narrate that. That's that's you're the narrator. You're the you're the conductor. Yeah. But if there's so much, I mean, how have you managed to manage those high intense, even being a panel yeah. of people like and talking these things through, which which I guess in many respects is quite liberating. Yeah, it it's cathartic, cathartic, definitely. Yeah, there you go. yeah. It's like opening a pressure like cooker. It's like because a lot of people are like, I've been for a lot. Like, well, I've never ever told my full life story to anyone publicly. So this will be the first time oh, on wow. Friday. So it's like, wow. Um, but yeah, so I've experienced like firsthand what it is to lose a parent from mental health problems, and so and that has fired me as wow. an artist. Wow. But yeah, it's like a lot of people in the creative world have been through dark stuff and that is what fires them every day. So yeah. I think most people have had, you know, they haven't had it easy. They've had like a quite, quite a tale. I, mean, I wouldn't want to spoil the, you know, the, the yeah. panel discussion, but what's, what's the details of your childhood? Like how, how have you got to this point where you're able to speak frankly and, um, uh, and, uh, more, um, honestly, yeah. uh, was take it. I literally didn't have the courage until this week. It's been years, like a decade. So it's just like, and I've read like a lot of people with like serious stuff they've gone through, trauma and things. They it takes them years to kind of cope with the mm-hmm. the truth. Mm. And you can tell people in the reason why I want to do it publicly is because I kind of I know it sounds cheesy, but I wish I'd seen something when I was a kid of someone going through what I went through, which was caring for a mentally ill. That's parent. not cheesy. That's yeah. That's uh, that's real talk. Yeah. And it's kind of the reason why you're doing the panel. Yeah. And that's the reason why I want to do anything really, to just if you can sort of make leave a good impression like in the world somehow. That's my goal for my life kind of thing. Yeah. I recently had a friend commit suicide a couple actually. Oh wow. Yeah sorry. yeah. And it's that's just horrific. no, no, hey listen. I, I'm sorry. We all have our own you know, there's but you the, I think the point is People make choices for themselves and it doesn't always, it's not always seen as the most logical. Well, it's not end. black and white ever. Yeah, it's deep, it's yeah. deep. And you can never, you, can, you can't get into the recesses of how someone's thinking because we all think totally different. And you can pass it off as like, well, it was his or her time, but it's not. It's, it's more deeper than that. And, it's, and in many respects, I think my synopsis is if... If someone's already made a decision, it's really 
quite hard to reverse that unless you really are. Well, unless you're like capable of mind control. Exactly. It's impossible. Yeah. And I think that's the angle that DJ Turno, who's running this panel on Friday, that's his angle. He just wants to kind of make it okay to talk about it because I think his brother in particular didn't say. Yeah. He just went and everyone was, didn't have a clue who mm. was even sad. He never mentioned it, yeah. never said anything. Yeah. And then obviously it got too much and he decided this is it. I don't want to be here anymore. And he just doesn't want, you know, if he can help anyone not get to that, the last day where they mm. go, this is the end day. We've taken a very dark turn here. We'll flip it back to music in a minute. But yeah, it's like, for me, that's inspiring. And I think even songs where you're like, you don't know why they hit you sometimes. And if you read the lyrics, like Rag and Bone Man, mm. he's written a song about his friend going through some mm-hmm, mm-hmm. dark stuff. And you're like, oh, I was just singing these, I am a giant. Mm. It's like, that's a seriously dark song, that so one. that's what that's about. Yeah, it's about suicide. So it's like, you can connect to people with lyrics, you can connect on a panel. With melody, and, yeah. Yeah, totally. and I just think there's a lot you can do. And mm. I don't just want to spend my time writing gym tunes. <laughs> <laughs> As great as they are. <laughs> I just think the thing is with, yes, they fucking are. But, you know, it keeps me going at 6.30 in the morning. You know, trust me, man. Um, I think music, which is something that I think politicians fail to understand, the wider, the, the wider industry, <clears throat> governments, powers that be, they understand the power of what music does to that frontal cortex. It's what makes Beatles mania happen. Well, people, li- it, music for me has, I know it's a bit tacky, but it has saved my life, yeah. literally. I do not gave doubt me that hope. for a second, darling. I honestly don't. It gave me hope to yeah. not give up because I had something to live for. I was like, I'm going to be a singer. Yeah. That's why I need to not stop. And yeah. I didn't and it worked. So it literally saved me yeah. over and over again because it gave me hope. And I think everyone on earth needs hope and mm. the people that are wobbly, mm. they've lost the hope. So you just need to kind of try and get it back. That's the thing. Just going back to the gym thing, the narratives are popping out everywhere now, but it's true, <laughs> like, you know, you've got to give yourself a reason to wake up so early and put your feet out of bed onto the floor. Yeah. That really is gym for me in a nutshell. It's like, yeah, I've got to get up. Yeah. Don't want to. Do you go every day? Yes. Wow. The of the time. But here's the thing. Um, you need a mission brief. Like, you don't yeah. just, if, whether it's whether it's, you know, a bereavement or whether it's a um you know get out of this shape into another shape get my shit together meet a fantastic woman or man and do the thing you need that mission brief to get you through the day Mm. and that's what music was to you yeah and i think even people on tiktok now they're finding hope through following people that they Mm. like comedy inspirational people like they find hope that way, like a lot of kids, 10 year olds, that's how they find their hope now mm. through like people they respect on the internet. And it's just mm. like, yeah, everyone needs something to inspire them, mm. like everybody. Mm. Like, yeah, even people that like, I'm a massive introvert and I'm happy being on my own, but you do need sort of like, mm. you know, warmth around you. Yeah. Yeah, in some way, whatever yeah, yeah. that is to you. Yeah. Do you ever go back <laughs> to Norwich? Not that much. Oh, yeah. Not I. I love Norwich. I'm like such a Norwich super fan. Now I left when I was 19 in quite sad like yeah. circumstances. So I go back now and again. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I like me some Norwich. You see, I like me some <laughs> Norwich. But um, <laughs> they love music there. Like growing yeah. up in Norwich, like Brighton's a bit similar. Like yeah. Bristol, Norwich, Brighton, same kind of vibes. Mm. Like the gigs go off mm. like London you get so much you're overwhelmed with amazing stuff in London yeah. like all the gigs are here Norwich not everything goes there we're so just it's super like, complete place yeah. we're just like, just like oh, are they in well, well I'll go see them next year they'll, yeah. they'll come through yeah and then Prince dies and you're like oh mm. not good not I didn't good. get to see him I heard on your mm. Kelly the Rock interview that you gigged with him yeah yeah I well yeah that's <laughs> all I can say oh my god but yeah you yeah. think like oh and another one like with the Covid stuff like everyone thought oh we'll do it later and then mm. it, it didn't quite happen. I had a few things that I said no to earlier that year, and then there was no more. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, like um, Holy Goof gigs, which is like he's a wicked DJ I had a song with, and he was like, "Oh, will you come and do a show at Printworks?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, there'll be more." That was uh, March two thousand twenty. Really? And then they all stopped for a bit, and I was like, oh, "I missed the boat there." But yeah, you don't, you can't ever count your chickens, no. whatever the phrase is. But yeah, lots more stuff does come to London. 
than Norwich. But it keeps you going, right? <laughs> like the whole idea. Of, I mean, you must, at this point, because I, I do want to know what your day ins and day outs are, because, again, as a songwriter, there's a, there, there has to be key moments of things happening. Schedule's always working. Things are always happening. Yeah. Um, but like you were saying there of, <coughs> of how you have to cut the M, take the opportunity as, as as soon as when it comes, it doesn't leave enough, a lot of time for creative flow, does it? No, it's weird. And I think something's changed in the last few weeks for me, like kind of realise what I why I started and I need to enjoy all the projects I'm doing. So I'm kind of just, if it's not connecting musically, I am saying no a bit more. But really? at the beginning I was like, yes, 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 yes. Because I wanted to make money and mm. I wanted to just sort of make a name for myself, mm. like spread my name out. So like I worked with Alexis Knox. He- oh, Ty Alexis. We love you. Come on, girl. Um, and that's how you heard yeah, of me. She, for those who don't know, Alexis, Alexis is the dy- dynamism of fashion, DJing um, across the more commercial scene. I think, you know, if, when I think of Alexis, I definitely think of the darling world of like Hoxton and, oh, and yeah. you know, and Tottenham Court Road, GAY and things like and that. Just and she's a fucking legend. International. She does lots of shows in like Amsterdam. Casually like, doing yeah, so. Yeah, like Flies There does a mm-hmm. DJ show. Yeah, she's amazing. But yeah, I had a song with her and I just said yes to everyone and hoping that people would know who I was eventually. And it kind of did, if you have a hundred songs out, someone will find you. <laughs> it's like, hello. Yeah, yeah, tell hello, me. me again. Hello. Yeah, yeah, tell me. <laughs> and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were mainly features. So I was just riding off the back of other DJs, which I felt a bit less scared about because if people don't like it you go well I was only the feature but one day I do need to do some solo stuff because I have done too many features now. really yeah I think so yeah you reckon that get out of here <laughs> I mean again, again look this is a bias me here yeah. but I discovered you through Alexis yeah um and I can, you you mentioned there about the you, you I think you coined it desperate I don't think it's you know the whole idea of putting yourself out there and knocking on so many doors. But you don't actually realise, because we were saying earlier that you don't actually, it's a faceless audience that you're knocking the door yeah. to. So so often it's like, it could be the most unlikely thing that you do that becomes the most important thing that you, you've covered, you, know, you gain ground on. Well, my best mate's brother, so I've been singing, his, he's known me since I was six, right, in Norwich, and uh, he went, oh, Guess what happened the other day? And he wrote, like, he found out that Archbishop of Banterbury Instagram followed me, and that was, in his eyes, the most impressive thing I've ever done. And I was like, <laughs> what's so, like, a comedy Instagram account follows me, and that's when you're impressed. Okay, right. I mean, they're very good, and yeah, they've got yeah. millions of followers, and it was pretty cool because they promoted one of my tracks, and that's why they followed me. But I was just like, this is so funny because to him, that was the best thing I've ever done. So you don't know what people will be impressed by. Mm. Like, for the majority when people when I say what do you do and I say I'm a singer and then the next question every time is anything I'd know and I'm like oh probably not loads of dance songs mm-hmm. and then I say like oh my songs have been in like strictly come dancing love mm. island like Emmerdale bang, 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 so bang, like, bang. come on they know those brands so they're more impressed by like a sync on a tv yeah. show than being you know mm. 15 million streams or something they're like Meh. But, oh, Strictly, oh, that's good, isn't it? A bit of that. Yeah. Isn't it weird how people's minds work? You know, you could have been, you know, you know, I remember running into my mum and dad going, oh, my God, guess what I just done, X, Y, Z, da, da, da. Yeah. And they don't bat an eyelid. It's only when I do the Simon Cowell show yeah. that all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, this is complete, you're legit now. You are super <laughs> yeah. legit. It's no way. famous. Yeah, yeah. What the, it's proper famous. Like, what is that about? <laughs> like, it's I think so people, strange. like, there's certain things that impress me, like, I don't know, off the top of my head, but, like, there'll be things that I've never done, like, you know, certain accolades, like a top 10. Like, I'd love a top 10. That's what keeps me driving. Like, mm. even as a songwriter, I'm like, I'm going to write or get a top 10. And there's one I've written two weeks ago. I'm not singing on, but I've written, and that has more than potential of charting. So I'm just like, come on, featuring two great people. So more on that soon. Mm-hmm. Not even going to say in case it falls through. Go on. But, yeah, I put together my first writing camp as, a like, a you know, organiser. I rented studio for five days and got 22 DJs and songwriters all gathered Fantastic. with Turno DJ, drum bass DJ. And um, yeah, we got some amazing stuff done. Like there's loads of people came through and we got... Did, some... That must have blown your mind. Oh, I'm still buzzing from it. It was like three weeks ago. Like it was next level. We wrote 22 songs in five days. 
and we've signed, I think, eight of them, like, to majors as well. So it's just like, boom, 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 boom. And it was all my a and ring I was like, this singer needs to go with this person. Like, Goddard came down, he's, like, smashing it right now. And we were like, right, this person needs to do this one. And Turno brought all his MCs down. It was just, it was so my vibe, because um, Garage and Drum Bass is my favourite. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yes! Like, I do a lot of house music, but my vibe is drum bass like that's what i listen to as a fan mm. like in the car like blast out so this was like best five days and like to be thinking oh my god i put this together it did blow my mind so empowering i was like yeah need to do more of this yeah, it's so great empowering. yeah it was really good what's it like when you've got um <laughs> what's it like when you've got folders upon folders upon folders of tunes and these are like you see again to sound real cheesy and cliche you know these are your kids you know these are things that you've kind of cultivated my song the babies yeah the song it's babies, really weird yeah the song babies. it's a real it, you feel a way about this shit like you know but then when you've got so many like you, you must be completely like you know, five years later, suddenly listing in one folder, oh, that's quite good. What happened to that? It you know? is weird. Like, especially I've, I used to colour code them to what I thought was good and what I thought was bad, like red and green. Mm-hmm. And then the, all the red ones, who what I thought were rubbish, started getting picked up. And I was like, are you mad? <laughs> like, oh, I just don't know what's good and going to connect with people. Mm-hmm. So I think it is a free for all because some songs come out and you think, why did you pick that one? Mm-hmm. Like, is that the best one? Mm-hmm. And but someone must have sat there and thought, this is brilliant. And then, yeah, I've got literally 500 songs all finished. It's so subjective, sat there. isn't it? And it's everyone. And then I get paid like a wedge to sing one song like that comes out and I don't even like it. And I'm like, well, I've got to pay my bills, so we'll roll with it. What's your, I, what's your, here we go, spice <laughs> alert. What's your least favourite song you like singing? Ooh. Oh, ever. Oh, oh, that's just mean to whoever oh, I wrote it with, though, isn't oh. it? Ah. Oh. One that's just like, you know, it's your, uh, let's call it your, um, um, uh, let it be. You know, you're, <laughs> the, the, you know, Paul McCartney probably just does not want to sing Let It Be, but because, you know, it's the famous song that everyone knows, he's just got to, he's got to stay on that pl- playlist. I'm not even going to be that mean. I'm going to say the hardest song. The hardest is, song, okay. Is my one that did the best, which is called New Levels, and I sang it before... I had this vocal problem and I literally can't sing it now. Really? Like live, yeah. I like I had a ripped a bit of my throat. Okay. In like 2020, because yeah. I was overdoing it, just saying yes to everyone <laughs> and going, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And sang so much, I like ripped my throat and it, I couldn't talk for two months. Like couldn't talk. Wow. It was so stressful. I was like, ah. But yeah, I can't sing that song, so I don't enjoy singing it. Because I literally can't do it. So. You literally tore yourself a new level. This was yeah. The, <laughs> it's like, ah! But that was just me. I overdid. That must have been some yeah. scary shit when you let that oh. out to your throat. Yeah, as I've a vocalist, got... I can totally relate with that. Just what? being an absolute nightmare. It was so weird because well, not only it was the social thing, the way you can't see your friends because you can't talk to them. I was on vocal rest for weeks and weeks. How long was weeks? Weeks? What, like a couple of months? Yeah, like I was speaking on a voice app. Did you ever try to just to test it? Like, yeah, and, how and then was it? it just hurt. Oh my god! What it was like, quite right? stressful. Yeah, Isla, man. it was. On. It was rubbish. But yeah, that's why I'm just like buzzing to be back in mm. full vocal health now. But yeah, I don't like singing that song because it's really high and loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. I mean, it's like you never, you know, on back back for the first time. I think that the the term would be because again, just there's somebody that's watching. Your story unfold, which I might add, by the way, in terms of social media, you know, you don't pull any punches. <laughs> like, it's not like, you know, there's no airing out closets of any emotional kind. There's no, there's no. <sighs> I don't put my real life on it. Yeah, like if but you. But no, that's what's really fucking, co- that's what I'm, that's where the yeah. flowers come in because okay. I rate that. Yeah. I rate the mystique. Yeah. I mean. No I was way. very surprised you were coming on. I'll be honest with you. No way. When you said, when you said, yes, I'd love to, I'd be like. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was like, super fan, yeah. of course, what time? <laughs> Where and do you live? Like, I'll come early just, you know, to watch from across the street for maybe two yeah, days. Yeah, <laughs> With binoculars, like, oh yeah, he's in there, he's in there, yeah. Got your signed copy from years ago. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we do get these around here yeah. on the podcast. Oh, stalkers, it gets a bit yeah. much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Just kill oh, the yeah, police yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, No, exactly. yeah, no, yeah. I'm really glad you invited me. I'm having a lovely time. But what it, what, what you said, yeah, and, and look, when you said yes, I was like, yo, this is, reasonably rare i don't actually see you going out and having frank 
I don't know, put my real life social. on the internet, really. And like, yeah, I don't do that many interviews. I just, unless it's sort of like, well, I know you and I'm a fan, so I was like, yeah, I'm well up for that. But I don't like, a lot of people are massive oversharers. That's why this... Mm. And they really get a kick out of that. I actually, I'm an introvert and I love to keep myself to myself. Mm. No one knows I've got cats. I'm a massive cat You're fan. You're a cat fan? Yeah. And like, How I many cats have you got? I've got two little kittens. Kitten. Uh, yeah, they're very sweet. But some people would probably fill up their socials with their cats. And I'm like, do you know what? They're my cats. They're yeah. just my world. What they're, kind of cats are they? They're little black, sort of witchy cats. Nice. I'm born on Halloween, so it suits me. I'm a witch. Yeah, I'm mm. born on Halloween. <laughs> See all the intel coming out of that. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Now that is so fucking uncanny. How, how how do you celebrate on your birthday on Halloween? I mean, it's everyone celebrating. Everything. Yeah, it is. It's not as bad as Christmas because at least yeah, people, suck, no one's it? free on Christmas if your no. birthday's in. I mean, it's fine. I just got a bit bored year after year. I actually remember when I was like twelve. I was like, "Can we do a non-fancy dress one?" That's my wish this year because mm. I'm sick of fancy <laughs> dress like every yeah. year. Like, do we have to go through the trick or treat thing on my yeah. birthday? Yeah, I've got. Come. I just want it to be about my birthday, not you guys getting sweets. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what else? What else? The little known facts about my leg, just so that we're we're definitely up to speed. I need to know everything because it's. Probably think maybe the next 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 podcast or chat will probably be in like three years time right. when she's. I'm engaged. In the top 10. I'm engaged. You're engaged. No one knows that I have a long term guy. Big up. Yeah, don't all talk right. about him. All right. So there we go. So there's the next one. This is all very secret intel here. But yeah, I don't put any stuff of my close world on the internet. It's weird. I don't like people because you get the crazy troll Steves. I don't want them have. I can handle them saying they don't like a live stream or whatever. I don't like the idea of people going. Here's my opinion of your mm. cat. I'd be like, what? Mm. What? Mm. Like, mm. you don't like my cat's name? Mm. Like, what? That's too much for me. Too, yeah, just yeah, like, get out. Anyway. Get yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, no one asked you, Steve. Uh, um, so what's... Um, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, okay, one more vital bit of un, unnoted uh, what, what, closet habits, closet loves, things you do. What's oh your... God. Any hobbies? Give me one more thing that you'd just be like, this is a curveball. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I just spent six hundred pounds on a Dyson Hoover because I love hoovering a lot, like obsessive hoovering. <laughs> yeah. Well, after uh, four hundred podcasts, you can most certainly come and hoover my floor. Yeah, it's not a problem ever. Yeah. I love a good, Do you? like seriously good Hoover. Yeah. Your fans are just going to be just like. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for the, the Hoover photos to end up on this feed. Yeah. You know. What I mean? So I'll be doing new TikToks from now. Me and we're selling my new Dyson. Yeah. yeah, yeah be yeah. like, you can buy one here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, love hoovering. Yep. Is that, an, is, that, is that an OCD thing? I'm not like super clean, as in like it doesn't bother You're efficient, me. efficient though. You're dead on time. Like today was no... No, I'm, I'm a late person, so I have to be crazy early. Like, yeah, and I have to make sure I'm naturally late. So I've like, you know, some people are just good at being on time. I have to really try mm. to put all my energy on not being super late because mm-hmm. I'm a naturally sort of like, oh, whoops. You're a creature of habit? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have a weird thing you said. Like, what do I do every day? I don't have the same routine. I don't have like the same place I go. Oh, so you're not a creature of habit. But I like routine, but I don't have any. So I am a creature of habit, but my freelance life doesn't really have that. Mm, so I've got like fun. my coffee shop near my house, where mm. I, like the guy makes my order. I walk in, Rafe, love you. Oh, tight, um, come on. Best coffee in Brighton. What's it called? What's the shop called? Um, Puck. Puck. We got yeah, puck. Come we on. Got puck. Um, it's next level coffee. Yeah, that keeps me fired up. Oat flat whites from there. Nice. But yeah, um, so I, that's my routine. I go and have a little mm-hmm. chat with him and then I go back and like write some songs and stuff. But yeah, it's weird when you don't have like the same thing to do every week. Mm. Like every week's different studio, different people, different gigs, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love it, but it is quite crazy. I mean, mm. you know, you've toured the world. Yeah, and yeah. It comes, that comes with vices as well. I mean, you, you said you'd stop drinking yeah i've completely i don't drink at all anymore which like, is a little no fact as well yeah yeah sober um never went to like aa or anything i just no. decided one day i did a gig and it got really messy and i just woke sick up sick and tired and sick like, and tired i just stopped yeah. yeah i was just like i don't want to be this person anymore mm. i'd always take it way too far i was that person that was like no we're going out and like we're not going home yet everyone we're going to the after party the mm-hmm. after party party mm-hmm. i was like oh and yeah, I just thought, do you know what? I just want to be healthy for a bit. And yeah. I just kept it up. How long for? Eight years. Congratulations. Come on, girl. Yeah, eight years. Um, yeah, that boat long time. needs to 
just out of the way, doesn't it? It's a well, I've just seen, I thought I'm going to be that person that I've watched that needs to stop partying because mm. it just, it wasn't good for me. Mm. Like, I mean, if you can handle it, go for it. I mean, getting drunk is really fun. I'm not mm. like, oh my God, not some kind of nun that's like, oh. Mm. And people, I'd hate for people to be like, awkward around me because I'm like no the reason that I don't want to do it anymore is because I'm worse than you mm -hmm. I've, I've been in every situation like I've done gigs in Ibiza and I can't remember coming home like crazy partying so days. in a case in point of like going to Ibiza and you've got to rock you know you've got to do your thing yeah is there a is there a okay two things is there are there people there waving you back to the hotel when you know full well that they're going to carry on partying and you're just like okay no I'm just going to do this do you feel a way about doing that well, it was all, I was with a lot of, like, just people that love partying. Okay. So I just don't really see all those That's people so news. much anymore. Yeah. You know, just people that haven't got your best interests at heart. Yeah. They're just out, they're like, I don't do drugs, but a lot of people did, like, a mm. lot of drugs. Yeah. And I was just like... I just don't want to do this anymore. Like, I think yeah. that's a lot of people's fear. I think that, what I just said there, but also the other one being um, FOMO. Oh, I had that a lot. That's why I couldn't <laughs> stop partying for years. I was yeah. like, no, I love this too much. Like, yeah. what if, what if, and then I just What am I going to do, just sit at home and do nothing? Yeah, I was yeah. like, loser, I don't want to be a loser. And now I'm just happy being a loser because, I mean, I am so busy, like, mm. doing studio stuff. I get to meet people every day, have really, like, amazing experiences. Mm. Like, my friend was like, that. She's she raves all the time, like, hard. And she's like, don't you get bored? And I was like, in all honesty, not at all. That's like, so cool. no. Like, I can't remember the last time I was bored. Really? I've got so many things that there I get a buzz from. I get a buzz from songs coming out. I get a buzz from shows. I get a buzz mm. from things that are coming up. Like, and just, you know, I've got more meaningful friendships and things because I was that person that forgot people's birthdays because mm. I'd always be just busy and just flapping about. Mm. I was a bit useless, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a good friend. And I'm a bit, I'm a better friend now. Definitely. Has that changed your, um, the drive and attention to think. Do you feel like oh, this is a cliche? Do you feel like the world has, the universe has opened up a little bit more to the the fact that you're in preparation. You've you've put that to one side. Do you feel like the attention that you're giving to this thing has helped yeah. on measure? Yeah. Drive take you to this place you are. I think physically, as a singer, if you are cane in it like raving all the time your voice literally goes mm. so i think you're a bit of like a boxer you have to be physically fit oh, and God, if you're not good. yeah if you're not sleeping and if you're just partying and getting one hour sleep there's only so many years your voice can physically it's a muscle mm. and it will just go it just goes eventually yeah. it depends yeah. like how strong some people are just like crazy hard yeah. but i'm a bit weak and my voice i'd lose my voice all the time and yeah it's just it's like you've got to be sensible I know it's really mm. a bit loser like. But. No, it's not. It's not. And you <laughs> lot know it yeah. too. You should be paying more attention to what your body's <laughs> saying. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, it's just like going to the gym like yourself. Yeah. Like, you've got to take care of yourself because yeah, you otherwise, you know, a lot of people, you have to have surgery. Yeah. Like, you get blood in your throat and stuff, and it's just from abusing your voice. That's Stop pretty, it. You're scaring me. That's pretty hard. Yeah, that's harsh. <laughs> So what's the future, dear? What's 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 the next? My new girl band. Go on. Girls next door. Girls oh, no, next door. Water all over your table. Oh, um, this is excitement, anticipation. Ooh, um, yeah, just having fun. Got a gig this weekend, and then we are doing some nice festivals. Loads of stuff flying in. So yeah, just loads of gigs, but ones I I'm gonna really sort of like be present for because mm. it's with a team, not just me doing like a one song PA with a DJ once Fucking where you sick. just come on and everyone goes eh, like ministerial sound I've done and you kind of feel a little bit sad when you just do two minutes because yeah. you don't get to really start and finish you're just on and off and you're like mm. oh but this one we do like an hour show of feisty females just having it go on so, so, where, so where, where, where are we going to be looking at seeing you we are doing our first gig on the 17th of February in Plymouth at the depot with Headex. So, and then there's loads more. And I can't remember anymore. <laughs> well, that'll do. You have to go online and check it out. That's what it is. She, you know, she's not backwards coming forward. You've got to check the Instagram. All right. Thank you so much for passing through. Thank you. This fucking podcast just gets better and better. Come on, man. Street culture in full effect, my fools. Thank you so much, my darling. Thank you. There it is. There it is. Killer Cat podcast. Out like in was out of fashion. You know it. Do sharing is caring. All right. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right. You stay lucky and don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Be lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs>